Good morning, everyone. I'm Pauline Sato. I work with the Nature Conservancy. Um, I just, first of all, before I, I start, I wanted to get a, a little bit of feel for who's in the audience. Um, I know I see some friends here, but just can you raise your hand if um, you have been through any of these programs um, that John or Sharon have talked about? Stand okay, stand up, stand up. We need a break, uh, stretch break. Oh, that's awesome. Look at that. That's almost half the group. Terrific. Okay, and um, how many of you have been in other intern programs that might not have been with John or Sharon, but just have been part of that? Yeah, okay. And how many of you are um, uh, agency employers or organizations that are looking for interns or have, have hosted interns before? Okay, wow, I got some repeat people standing too. That's awesome. That's good. Okay, well, thank you very much. Um, really if wonderful to see you. Stand up, can stand up now. Yeah, okay, so yeah, anyone who hasn't stood up, let's just see who you are. Uh, okay, well, um, I'm really grateful to be on this panel, and um, Sharon has already exposed my um, history and age. <laughs> I know. I've actually been with the Nature Conservancy since 1991, so it's been a while. Um, and I've had about four different jobs <laughs> since then. So I've um, been, you know, in different positions, but my background, my um, training, my true love is really with environmental education and with working with people and communities. And I, I, I can't agree um, any more with Sharon saying that natural resource management, while it is about the environment, um, it can't be done without the people. Um, so it's absolutely important to have the right people working on this so that we can achieve our goals. Um, unfortunately, in my, my transition through the conservancy, I can't I don't run intern programs anymore. Um, I, don't, I don't really have a huge role with them. But um, I, it, whatever we do when it's working with um, communities or with uh, volunteers, I try to participate in that and, and give some um, feedback on that. So it's great to you know, continue to be part of this. And thank you, Sharon, for asking me for being, um, being on this panel. My presentation should be short. so. Um, um, we can have more time for discussion, but basically I wanted to cover some of the things that the Nature Conservancy has done in the area, of, in this area of nurturing lo local youth to, to grow into the conservation field in Hawaii, and then focus on one program in particular, which Sharon uh, mentioned recently. So some of the um, programs we've had, we've, um, we still continue to have summer internships at our preserves, and for the most part, they have focused on the, the um, students, be they high school or college, from that island, and working you know, for the two months or however long summers are. I think summers are getting shorter um, with the school changes. And um, places like on our Molokai uh, preserves, there's uh, programs like Ho'ikaika and Alulike who have provided us with um, students that we can work with on the ground in the summer. And um, there might be other programs coming up. And it's really great to see, especially when I go to the Molokai office and it's like, wow, all these local, you know, from Molokai working there uh, full time and just really um, getting totally involved and 
totally loving their job because they're actually doing something that you know they feel really makes a difference and it's in their community so it's I think that's just awesome uh, one of the programs that w I started in 1992 and did for um, almost 10 years, it's just a blur now, sorry. It's called Ho'aina, Stewards of the Land. And that's kind of what I was brought on for. It really was to um, bring local students into conservation because we were seeing that for our job openings coming up, it was really hard to get folks who have the, the training, the background, um, who are from Hawaii, to, to take those positions. And I'm born and raised here. Um, when I, I, for some reason, I had the, the calling to work in the environmental field from when I was probably 10 years old. And, um, but when I graduated from college, I went to Michigan, um, learned all about woody plants and um, beavers and things that we don't have. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I decided I wanted to come back, uh, you know, learned about the honey creepers when I was in Michigan, which is kind of odd. And I thought, wow, I've never heard of that. I, you know, I got to go home and took Mark Merlin's class at UH Manoa in the summer. And he, I don't know if any of you have taken his class, but it's just filled with beautiful photographs of all these wonderful plants and animals. And I'm like, wow, I've never seen any of those, you know, and they're all going extinct. I got to do something about it. So I, you know, made a commitment to be here, um, but really there were very few jobs. Um, today it's different. I mean, for those of you who are the youngins out there, uh, I think you have it a lot easier than maybe we had it about um, 20 years ago. That it uh, very, very few jobs available um, to be in this kind of um, position. So anyway, with the whole Aina program, we started small with about six um, students. It grew, I think our final year, we had about um, 20, 24 students or so. And really it was, um, I, I don't know if I, I'm going to sound boastful, but I think our model that we developed, we, we gave to the YCC program. And I'm really, uh, you know, even though I'm not running our program anymore, just so happy that John has taken it to the, the you know, not just the next level, but really boosted it up because it's, it's just fabulous what he's doing. So I really um, thank you for that. Um, another program is Project Stewardship, which was more for the um, high school level. So this was involving um, schools on Oahu, and we also branched it out to some neighbor islands working at preserves or natural areas and developing a curriculum that we tried to align with the DOE standards. I won't go into that because that's just another, um, another conference in itself. But um, we, we ran that for a while. We don't do that anymore, but the curriculum is available for those of you who are interested in um, tying in some you know, lessons in conservation with high school students. Um, we do college-based internships. Some of them are informal. We you know, get re ref um, calls all the time from people who want to either volunteer or do something for college credit. So we try to fit that in whenever possible. Um, and then the one I really want to focus on is our Assistant Natural Resources Manager Program. That's the official title, um, ANRM, that we started a couple years ago and uh, we graduated some really fabulous people who, um, some of whom are in this audience. So I will talk about that because that's the Nature Conservancy's uh, most recent effort. And it really was reacting to a real need of finding qualified um, natural resources managers in particular who understand Hawaii and our communities. Um, I don't know if Melissa Kamara is in our audience today, but she was with the Nature Conservancy on our Maui um, office. And I think she had, um, I don't know if it was a bowl of ramen or something <laughs> with our um, boss, Suzanne Case, really kind of lamenting the fact that they were trying to fill positions on Maui in particular and having a really, really difficult time finding the, the um, candidates who they felt could take the job um, uh, to the next level. And so this, I think Suzanne was just saying, well, why don't we really invest in a program that um, is not just a summer long, not just a year long, but actually two years long, and um, hire people to work full time, and in that pe time period, train them to become natural resources managers. So um, I might have my dates wrong. It might have been 
2004 to 2006, but it was a two-year uh, program that we just gradu we graduated um, four people. So it's a small, intensive program. It um, one of the highlights of it, the design, is that every month there was a module. It was a, either day long or it might have been two days, sometimes three days, where the um, they would come together and it would be like a curriculum in a sense, but spend. Um, all that time on a particular aspect of what we felt natural resource manager needs to know. So basically, before we started it, and I did consult with Sharon a lot because she has so much experience in developing these in-depth programs, but we started it, the program or the design of the program by asking, okay, at the end of this program, what do we want these people to be able to do? And then design it so that by the time they graduate, um, basically, we want them to be able to be hired at a natural resources manager level. So the types of things that we covered even included, you know, um, the paperwork side of things, the PMS, uh, paper management sucks part of the job, um, writing grants, um, supervising, working with volunteers, so not just the environmental side, you know, we did have ungulate control and we had weed control techniques, uh, but we also talked about public speaking. Um, so we had uh, over two years, uh, every month we had a different module. So that took a lot of work on the planning coordination side to make sure we had um, the, the types of information available and the assignments, they had homework uh, that they had to do as well. So um, these are our, uh, the people who went through our program. Um, I see Kahale Polly in our room, and Francis Kidazal, as Sharon mentioned. We had Sam Aruk and Eldridge Naboa. Um, it was so they, the other aspect of, of it was it was a full-time job, so they had on-the-job training. So Kahale was on Oahu, uh, Francis was on Maui, Sam was on uh, Molokai and Eldridge was on the um, island of Hawaii. So they were working side by side with the natural resources managers on those islands for the most part doing, you know, whatever it was, fence, fencing, weed control, hunting, et cetera. Um, but they also had the monthly modules and then they had individual research projects. So they had to choose a project kind of early on, um, maybe within the first six months of the program. and. Um, propose it, write it up, and then be able to conduct it, and by the end of the two years, report on it. So that was um, you know, another aspect of it. And one of the things that we kind of added in to, um, as the time went on was more writing intensive assignments, because um, writing is something that maybe not a lot of people in the environmental field think they, they might need, but it really is important. You have to be able to communicate not only orally, but in writing with the reports and the grants and all those things. So we saw that um, we needed to boost our, our um, ANRMs on that. So we uh, made them write a lot and rewrite and rewrite. Uh, we also had island exchanges so that they, um, in addition to coming together once a month, they were able to spend, I think it was one week um, on another island and being with another field crew because our programs on the different islands do differ. Some of them are focused um, maybe in the wetland, I mean the, the upper wetter forest areas. Some have more um, drier forests and some are more focused on ungulate control or weeds. So we really try to um, vary that. Um, and then uh, we had a final presentation at the end of the two years where they actually presented their research projects graduation. So um, this is the graduation day uh, that we had and I think they um, they went through some sweating on this because they had to really prepare the presentations or PowerPoints. I mean we made them work really really hard because we wanted them to um, once they leave the program to be able to step into the, the you know management position. Um, so they worked very hard and I'm really happy to say that all four are working in full-time jobs as natural resources managers. Um, at Maui Land and Pineapple, that's with um, Sam, Army Natural Resources Program with Kahale, and um, 
the Nature Conservancy was able to um, ask uh, or lure both Eldridge and uh, Francis to stay on. And the, the goal of this program really wasn't for the Nature Conservancy to have um, you know, people for our own organization. We really wanted um, them to be available to other organizations as well. But it, um, this was a test program. It was the first time we did it. Um, we're not, we don't have a current group right now. Frankly, we were um, exhausted as the uh, <laughs> coordinating group, um, and we needed a little bit of break, but we took a lot of notes. We have three binders of all the things we did and the, um, how we would change it in the future. We may, we're looking into doing, because Nature Conservancy is expanding into the marine realm now, we're um, looking into an ANRM type program on the marine side next, and then and try to go back to um, the terrestrial side again. So we'll see how it goes. But as far as costs, um, it cost us a lot because we paid these people full-time jobs. So it was about $200,000 uh, to make this program run. So it's not a, a small investment at all. So it does take um, grant money to do that. I just wanted to end with a few underlying questions of, um, about these programs. You know, what impact are the intern programs having? And I think John and Sharon did um, really well in, in trying to show not only on the in interns themselves, but on the rest of the community. Uh, but we always should be asking that. Um, how can we gauge their success? Um, you know, are they getting the jobs? And are they doing the jobs well? Um, is there more demand for them? Um, and what role do conservation agencies and organizations have toward that success? You know, we have a crop of people coming through, and I have to say, I've been coming to this um, conference for many, many years, and I've seen it grow, I've seen it become more diverse, um, younger people from all over, and it's, it's really encouraging. So I think things are changing, but now that they're there, what, what are um, the employers doing to um, help them, are they being hired for um, the higher level positions? And you know, we re realize that you have to start somewhere, but are they really reaching the higher levels, the management decision making positions? And if not, why not? Um, what is preventing that from happening? And um, can we figure out how, what needs to be done to make that change so that the people that we are grooming and training can be at the, the higher decision level ma um, making positions? So I'm just gonna end with um, those questions and hopefully we can um, discuss some of them in our um, later part of the discussion. So thank you very much. Apane mai pahai ke yamamu 